So ladies and gentlemen, today we have gathered here to celebrate something very special. We've gathered here to celebrate people, but no ordinary people. We've gathered here to celebrate people with extraordinary skills. We are here to celebrate entrepreneurs. I, Mohit Malhotra, welcome you all to the 100 Exhibit Hottest Tech Startups. Let's get started. Now I would like to call upon Mr. Ramesh Sumani, MD of Exhibit Group, the man behind putting up this whole show and a serial entrepreneur himself who has risen from ground up and been a startup once and understands what it takes to succeed. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Ramesh Samani. A warm welcome to all present at the exhibit Hottest 100 Tech Startups 2014. It feels great to address a house full of entrepreneurs. The energy is infectious. We reach out to the whole startup community and receive more than 500 plus entries. And this would not have been possible, of course, without, without our partners, IAM, Thai, and Nascom. And then from there on, and from this 500, we created the hottest 100. And then we further filtered down to 20 something. Who will be pitching today? Now, there are two quick points which I want to highlight. First is we have kept the pitch to five minutes. Secondly, at the end of the day, there will be two top three startups who can hit all the spotlight and be crowned the hottest three startups of 2014. So now we have, uh, for keynote, we have Anupam Mittal. He is a uh, started his entrepreneurial journey by founding People Group. Many of you would be knowing or would have been to shadi.com, sure. And of course, he's also a man behind makan.com and Moj Mobile. He's got over 40 million people visiting People Group properties every month. And each brand has become a leading player in his category. So, Anupam, please come on stage. You know, I'm assuming a lot of entrepreneurs here in the audience. So, congratulations on, uh, on taking the first step. Uh, it's a tough journey, but as I've found, it's very re rewarding and liberating. Uh, particularly, uh, you know, I find that as an entrepreneur, even if you fail, you succeed. And the reason is, for me, it's been a personal growth journey unparalleled with... Uh, anything I've done before or anything I've done since. So I think uh, it's a great time uh, for you to be an entrepreneur. It's a historic time in our country specifically. Uh, my journey itself was a little different, uh, very different from what we are seeing today. I started out in the mid-90s. I was in India for a few uh, months from the US. And as an experiment, I started a small company called Shadi.com. It uh, was very easy then because I remember the first uh, engineer we hired, and you guys will laugh at this. Any guesses how much we paid him? It was 7,000 rupees. But uh, the sad part was there was no user growth. From I think 99 to 2006 or 7, India was at about 9, 10 million internet users. That's really it, you know, give or take a million up or down. Uh, so what does one do? How do you build businesses when uh, your business is about getting more and more users? So we started something called Moj Mobile, and uh, and Makan.com uh, as a means to uh, expand our share of the wallet. Uh, I think uh, uh, it'd be good to sort of uh, just share some observations with you in terms of uh, you know, what some of the critical success factors are. Unless you're user-obsessed, unless you're consumer-obsessed, it's very, very hard to build a business. If you are consumer-obsessed and you have unflinching focus, Network effects pretty much come up to protect and build moats around you. So if you think of what Google did to Yahoo, what Facebook's doing to Google in a way, uh, all this is possible because of uh, the unflinching focus and, uh, and product and consumer obsession. So I think that's one of the key aspects of building great businesses uh, in, in today's uh, digital ecosystem. The other, I believe, is speed, uh, talent, and culture. Finally, I think... Uh, I wanted to just add, lots of times we meet uh, entrepreneurs who say, look, I want to be an entrepreneur, but are there enough ideas out there? I think we've run out of ideas, right? Everything worth doing has been done. And I don't think we are even halfway there. So lots of problems to be solved and many, many more multi-billion dollar companies to be built. Uh, so as I said earlier, go out, be long-term greedy and persevere. And as I always say, heavenly forces uh, will come to your aid. Thank you. Thank you, Anupam, for sharing your insights. Uh, all right, so let's get started. Our first techie today is Naya Sagi, with a tech startup, Baby Chakra. As the name suggests, it enhances and evolves the industry of pediatric and maternal healthcare. All right, let's welcome Naya Sagi. So 
what baby chakra does is that right from when you're expecting a baby, so minus nine, to when your child is five years of age, so minus nine to five, that whole continuum, that whole life stage, we help parents discover and decide on local services. Now we've done things a little differently. So unlike a, a typical classified platform where you're just sort of sending feet in the street and, and putting everyone on, on your platform, we said, let's start with a process of crowdsourcing. So on Baby Chakra, currently we've had thousands of mothers write in, crowdsourced local service recommendations from these mothers in both Bangalore and, and, and Bombay, which is where we are live. And these are the services that we've started off by profiling on Baby Chakra. So right from doctor recommendations to hospital recommendations to play school recommendations to daycare recommendations to nanny agency recommendations, we have them all. The market is big, it's fragmented, there's been endemic information asymmetry, there's massive quality differential even in the same brands of local services. So we feel Baby Chakra can really make a dent and really make a difference in actually solving through crowdsourcing, through social integration, that quality differential, that information asymmetry for millions of parents. The beauty of the whole situation is there are already 80 million young parents online and they are looking for information like this. So in terms of behavior change, we don't need to create that. We're just a platform that actually brings in people who already are online looking for this information and giving them that information much easier in a more time critical manner. Our business model is, uh, is pretty simple uh, through a combination of subscriptions from the local services as well as lead generation through the products and of course we're getting a lot of interest from brands. We expect to reach about 9 crores uh, in revenue by, in the next 3 years. So I'll stop here and open it out to questions. Mitesh, do you want to join me? So one quick question is, you know the mums area typically has a very short kind of duration of high engagement. So how do you transition um, your kind of you know business to carry forward because there's a lot of hyper engagement and then it just lo drops off right right now our answer to this question would be that let's focus on really building high engagement and high traction through this life period and doing whatever it takes yeah thank, thank you so much thank baby you. chakra for this great presentation our next techie is nakul kapoor with his tech startup playandlive.com play and live has identified business opportunity in the billion dollar sports and fitness market all right let's welcome uh, nakul kapoor on stage please Hi everyone, uh, I represent here playandlive.com. Uh, we are an online sports and fitness uh, discovery and booking platform. We are trying to get hold of all the <clears throat> sports facilities in terms of coaching academies, clubs and complexes, gyms, yoga centers and other fitness activities on one platform. Uh, helping users and consumers who want to join such facilities make an informed choice. Uh, so this is what playandlive is uh, in a nutshell. We have a very simple platform, uh, the user has to select the city the sport they want to play, and we display a result. We've just started up, and uh, we have a very, very simple mobile website, because we get about 60% of our traffic from mobile. We are, as a startup, very much focused on revenue, and uh, which is why we've been focused on, say, putting up facilities and charging them from day one. Our revenue model, uh, apart from only the booking SaaS model hasn't been tried yet, but apart from that, all other you know, models that we've listed here, we've made money out of that. Uh, when I say made money, we haven't made millions, but we have taken some share of, you know, of the revenue from each of these. Our uh, traffic uh, has been pretty much the same because we haven't done any, you know, paid advertisement on Facebook or Google AdWords so far. Uh, it's been we've got about uh, 10,000 unique visitors every month, about 25,000 page views. We have about 7,000 listings across uh, 11 cities. We want to be a platform wherein people who want to get into you know, a sport or you want to join a fitness center, they should come to Play and Live. Just like Shadi, just like Nokri, just like Ghana. For sports and fitness, it should be Play and Live. Thank you. Our next techie is uh, in other end. Uh, so let's hear it from the horse's mouth. So we are Musinly.com. Uh, we, are, we are into the music tourism space. While we have seen that uh, digital, the digital space of music is really growing and everything, but overall there's a massive dip in global uh, music revenues and music sales. So where are people actually consuming music? Where are consumers buying music? Uh, people are actually investing in experiences. So just a few examples like live events. Uh, well, how big it is? Uh, there is 30 million people that are traveling outside their country today to, to a music festival. The minimum ticket price is $50. 
and the average expenditure for per person in a festival is $150. In India, it's, it's been a great rise as well because we are sort of based out of India. We are sort of tying up with many local festivals and sort of selling their experience, but we have done many, many international festivals on exclusive and non-exclusive basis. Right now, we list over 80 festivals. We really believe in, in the community, in the people, in connecting people and getting them uh, because there's multiple transaction opportunity there as well as content opportunity as well. We found that most people are using their mobiles uh, in the, during the festival or the event or the music experience and sharing their uh, photos, videos, talking to people, telling their friends that, hey, I'm here, tweeting about it, etc. And hence the connect feature. Uh, our revenue model so far has been if, if it's an exclusive festival uh, that is tied up with us, then we obviously get commission on their ticket sales, on the accommodation, we build packages for the festival. So our strategy is quite simple. Uh, we want to own locally, uh, build locally, uh, local and going global, and of course we want to sell ourselves globally. Uh, we want to be the ultimate destination for all music experiences across uh, different genres, cultures, regions, uh, beyond festivals as well. That's it from us. Let's embrace new culture. Thank you. So uh, up next, with this tech startup, Haptic Inc. Haptic has created an iOS and Android app to help users get help with products and services over messaging. Let's have a look. Uh, my name is Akrit. Uh, so what is Haptic? So Haptic is basically uh, a mobile messaging assistant that gets you help with products and services. Everyone uses WhatsApp, so think of it like a messaging app like WhatsApp, but instead of talking to your friends and family, you're actually talking to an expert to get help about a product or a service that you want to use or you might be using. And you pop the app open, you'll find you know, hundreds of companies or businesses listed over there. Uh, so I pick a particular company, pick a particular business, have a question about the product or service, send in a question. So we've established an army of experts. Uh, all of these experts are sitting across the entire country in different places. Uh, they are sourced by us, they are trained by us. We have now uh, created a wide knowledge base of the most commonly asked questions across the board. So I think now we have over 16,000 uh, questions and scripts associated with those questions. We're pretty excited about the technology we're building, uh, where to, today if you ask a question, there's a high probability that instead of the expert having to look around or look up, that message will be sent through our database. It will be queried across the entire uh, base and then an answer will pop up in front, of the question, in front of the expert. And the best part is that actually as of February now, the average response time is three minutes. Um, another significant achievement that personally I feel very proud of was uh, that last year we were picked in the uh, productivity category of Google Play. Uh, we were the only app from India to be picked in that category. You'll find that you know, people use it for typically three types of functions. One is you know, a replacement to the search, right? which means, hey, I need some information. Second is traditional customer support. Hey, look, I have, been, I have a problem with my carrier. What can you help me with that? And the third, which is the smaller category, is uh, you know, sort of the concierge type stuff. Hey, can you web check in for me? Cool, thanks. I'm happy to take uh, any questions. Uh, please download the app, if nothing else. Very interesting model. Hey. I'm just curious, is this an India-specific problem that you're solving? So, good question, right? So, um, we started out saying that we'll sort of, uh, um, you know, do this in India and see where it goes with the idea that, you know, we want to go out to the US and other markets quickly. Uh, but given the response we've seen in India, we don't have any intentions to go out anytime soon. Uh, we think there's big enough market in India. Thanks, uh, guys. I suggest we now take a short break, and maybe you all can use this time for some quick networking. All right, catch you guys up to the break. Just be loud. Our next techie is Webhav Shetty with his tech startup, Fragging Monk. Fragging Monk Technologies is a startup with a vision to assemble and market its own brand of high-end gaming systems and PC customization options. So please welcome uh, Webhav Shetty on stage. And now, gamers in India are a very niche segment. People don't, don't know where to reach out to them, how to reach out to them, how to categorize them, how to touch them. Now, as a team, we've managed professional gamers, and we're typically the touch point for a lot of gaming brands to touch these gamers. We realized there's a big gap in the kind of equipment available to people in India. So we decided to launch the product Fragmong Technologies. Now, currently it is the only active branded gaming desktop in India, and we are the first and only professionals to offer customized and modding options to 
the gamers. The specs are optimized for both casual and competitive gaming. Uh, we make sure the, parts, the quality of parts are there and we give after sales service, which is something the unorganized sector does not do right now. Now, if you look at the target market, we categorize them as individuals and institutions. What we are targeting are esports professionals, which is a growing profession in India. Uh, the casual gamers who want to play game every day or every second day and the serious hobbyists, people like me who take our game extremely seriously and want a very high-end system at our place to play games. Now, if I look at numbers, since there is no other branded desktop active in the market, every high-end gaming graphic card sold is essentially a new gaming PC built in India. So if you stick only to the high-end gaming graphic cards, last year 70,000 gaming graphic cards were sold. If I put an average figure of 70,000 rupees per PC, that's a market of 490 crores. It's grown 50% over last year, and the year before that it grew 100%. Now, our revenue model is very simple. We are a product company and we are selling this as a product to the end customer. So it's either through direct sales or sales to stockists and distributors. We are working on cloud gaming. We believe it will be big in India. And there is a logical uh, you know, diversification into laptops and tablets, which we want to go to in the next uh, three to four years. If anybody thinks of gaming in India, they have to think fragging monk. Um, that's about it. Uh, so our next techie is Vibhav Mehta with his tech startup, Phone Spa. Phone spa, as the name suggests, is a spa for mobile phones where phones can enjoy a deep tissue and a pressure point massages followed by a steam bath. No? <laughs> oh, my bad. Uh, so then uh, let's fi find out what this is all about. So uh, the concept actually came for, you know, in today's world, most, I mean, all of us are actually spending most of your time, uh, you know, with your uh, mobile devices rather than your family, right? You know, every time... I think so maybe about 10, 12 hours in a day, you know, in the night also, we spend a lot of time around our phone. So, you know, don't we think our phone also needs a spa? And that's where this uh, entire concept is built. The overall opportunity in mobile accessory, and if out of that entire mobile accessory, if we just take about mobile cases or a protection devices, that's as, as huge as 2,000 crores. Uh, but one of the good thing is uh, there are no focus player actually in India who is on a retail front focusing around specialization, personalization within phone accessories. And here, Phone Spa actually brings the complete personalization experience to your phone. But what product and services we are starting with, again, it's been divided into three phases. Phase one, we are going to focus more towards personalization into cases, which is designer cases, personalized cases, and screen protectors. In the second phase, we are going to add more accessories like power banks, earphones, speakers, uh, again with the personalized experience and the third phase is going to be around the services uh, right from your warranty services to your on-site pickup services antivirus and stuff like that so we want to become a kind of a one-stop shop for all your mobile accessories or mobile service related stuff thank you thank you Vibhav. Uh, our next techies are a team of two Vivek Jain and Mahadev Gupta with their tech startup Flipper an augmented reality-based mobile platform with an objective of augmenting the whole world and getting the users to use the app on a daily basis. Let's have a closer look. I'm part of Flipar and uh, we're based from Bangalore. It's a user engagement app. So the app that we built uh, helps build that user engagement and we use augmented reality as one of the ways to do that. Uh, it's basically a technology where it does image and object recognition. So you point a device to a certain object and it can load some information. Up. So we're focusing on uh, the movie space where we would want to get you audience uh, engagement. Uh, so so, so it's basically you go to a movie, you see posters of, uh, say, the upcoming launches. So you take your device, point it to the poster, it could play a trailer or it could uh, you could sort of connect with the stars of the movie. It's sort of you know building the user engagement, and you could also sort of enable uh, buying of tickets, uh, predominantly using affiliates. So the objective is basically to build a user base using the entertainment platform in the next six to eight months, and eventually reach out to other brands to subscribe to this yeah. revenue model in terms of ads, uh, brand subscribing, and then ticket sales as affiliates. So you point to a certain poster, and you can book m movie tickets. Uh, E-commerce e affiliate marketing. So you point to sort of device to a certain product and you can order. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks. Thank you, Vivek. Our next techie is Amog Bashampayan with his tech startup paint collar. It's a retail innovation which aims at creating a marketplace for designer merchandise created by artists. Let's hear his uh, artistic thoughts. <laughs> Hi, uh, good afternoon. Essentially, Paint Collar is a marketplace for designer merchandise created by thousands of artists 
from all over the world. So Paincaller enables you with the click of a button to create and sell your products online with your art on it at your own price and with zero upfront costs. All an artist has to do is sign up, upload his artwork onto our product templates, set his own profit margin and hit upload and that's it. We take care of everything else. Our business model essentially works with this formula. For every product you create on paintcaller.com, we quote a base price. That includes our cost for manufacturing, packaging, delivering, includes our profit as well. We started off with four products that are selling the most online. That is t-shirts, posters, laptop skins and canvas prints. And within the next month or so, we're adding mobile cases as well. We started out uh, in September 2014. And so far, we've got over 500 artists who have created more than 4,000 products on our platform. So that's all about Paincaller. I hope you liked it. You can get in touch with us at contact at paincaller.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Moog. Uh, so I must say that looking at all the presentations and pitches today, I'm very excited about the future of our economy. So I would like to invite our jury members to share with us their thoughts and perspectives on the presentations made by our participants today. So please join me in welcoming our esteemed jury. So don't worry, we're at the end of the show. We're just going to announce the winners. There were three winners. So I'll start from the uh, third category. Basically what we've done is we have totaled all the uh, stats. This is mine in, fr in front of me. Every jury member has given basically points to every attribute and then we just totaled it up. Now, on the third place, uh, we have Musenli, Ninad Shah. Great work, Ninad. Please come. Congratulations, Musenli, both of you. So, uh, the second winner is uh, Baby Chakra. Uh, Naya Segi, yes. Great work. You guys deserve it. <laughs> Congratulations, Baby Chakra. All right, guys, now we have the grand finale. Basically, it's just that couple of points here and there. So now, this one, I think we can take a guess, right? Anybody? Any guess? You guys got it right. Haptic, come on. Congratulations, Haptic. Thank you, Sahil, for all these lovely gifts. It's JBL speakers. Thank you, Jury. And as an end note, uh, I'd like to say, always remember that in this fast-changing world, neither success nor failure is ever final. And to all the ones who didn't make it to the top three today, please remember that it's not the end of your success story. I'm sure it'll soon prove itself to be just another part of your success story. Good luck. Have a good evening. g and &E. A name synonymous with mobile technology in the largest mobile market in the world, China. Based in Shenzhen, Geoni has made rapid strides since it started operations in 2002. Ranked among the top five mobile brands in China, Geoni today sells in over 40 countries. Geoni entered India a couple of years ago and is already ranked seventh among the handset manufacturers. This dramatic growth has been on the back of a slew of world-class phones. With high decibel launches and highly visible associations, Geoni today enjoys the trust of over 4 million Indian consumers. Within a short span, we have already set up over 750 service centers across India. We believe that products and experiences should be as unique as the people who use them. And we will spare no effort in constantly providing a world-class mobile phone experience.